In our previous videos, we discussed about the female reproductive part of a flower and we saw in detail the structure of the ovule, which is also called the megasporangium. And the structure is this one. Now, this megasporangium or the ovule is the place where the megaspores will develop. And megaspores means the female spores. Now, in this video, we are going to talk about how that megaspore develop inside this megasporangium or inside this ovule. And the entire process of formation of megaspore in the ovule is called megasporogenesis. Here, megaspore means the female spore. And it is called mega because it is comparatively bigger to the male spores which are called microspores. And genesis means formation. Formation. So, uh, we are going to talk about how female spores are formed inside the ovule. Okay, so let's begin. Let's bring in focus only the ovule. Here you go. Now, inside the ovule, as you can see, there is a mass of cell which is called the nucellus. Now, one lucky cell from this nucellus will grow in mass and it will become the mother cell to give rise to megaspores. Now, which one will be that lucky cell? Well, it is seen that one cell from the hypodermal region near the micropyle area will give rise to megaspores. Now, you might think that, hey, I understood what is micropyle area. It must be somewhere here. But what is hypodermal region? Well, uh, the cell, uh, the layer of cell, which is outside the nucellus, or I should say the outer layer of cell in the nucellus, is called the epidermal layer of cells or the dermal layer of cells. And the cell layer, which is underneath it, is called the hypodermal cells. So this one will be the hypodermal cell layer. So one cell from the hypodermal cell layer near the micropyle area will increase in size and will give rise to megaspore later. So let's say this is that lucky cell that has increased in size and has accumulated a lot of cytoplasm and will give rise to megaspore. But mind you, this is not megaspore yet. This is just an ordinary cell that has increased in mass, has accumulated a lot of cytoplasm. But this is not a megaspore yet. It will undergo a number of cell division to give rise to megaspore and we will see how. But as this cell will now be responsible to give rise to megaspore, we call this cell the megaspore mother cell. Quite makes sense, right? Megaspore mother cell or we call it MMC. Alright, having said that, having talked about MMC, now let's focus on the cells that are surrounding the MMC. Because new cellus is made up of a number of cells and, and only one got lucky to become the MMC. What is the role of the other cells? Well, the other cells will provide nourishment as the MMC grows in size. It will derive the nourishment and it will derive the cytoplasmic content from the cells that is surrounding it. Alright? Now, this MMC will undergo cell division, but not any cell division. It will undergo a special kind of cell division, which is called meiosis or the reduction division, in which the chromosome number of this MMC will get reduced to half in each cell. So, if we say this is how it got divided into two cells. So, this is meiosis. And if we consider that this cell has twice n number of chromosomes, then after meiosis, or I should say meiosis 1, because meiosis takes place in two stages. So after meiosis 1, each cell will have half the number of chromosomes. So they will have n number of chromosomes each. Now meiosis, you may already know, gets completed in two stages. So after meiosis 1 takes place meiosis 2, which is similar to mitosis. And after meiosis 2, we get four cells. And here the number of chromosomes stays the same. Number of chromosomes would be n in each cell. So we saw that meiosis took place in the MMC and by the end of meiosis, we got four cells that are haploid. 
All right, now can you tell me why MMC underwent meiosis and not any other type of cell division? Uh, how about you pause the video for a while and think about it? All right, let me tell you the answer. For any plant on earth, when it undergoes uh, the process of sporogenesis or gametogenesis, where spores or gametes are produced, let's say male and female gametes are produced, there meiosis takes place so that the chromosome number is reduced to half and later when the fusion of the male and female gametes take place, they will give rise to a diploid organism or in this case a diploid plant which is having the same number of chromosomes as that of the parent plant. Simple right? So this is the reason we see meiosis in megaspore mother cell. And we saw that the megaspore mother cell gave rise to four spores at the end. But now we will see that something happens to these four spores. Something very unusual happens here. These three spores will degenerate. It will degenerate or I like to call it as sacrifice their lives so that one spore can have a healthy and a fully nourished life. So these three cells give up all its nourishment to just one cell which is the functional megaspore. So this one here is finally a megaspore. So this is a megaspore and it is haploid. And also, since only one spore later gave rise to an embryo sac, this entire process of formation of the megaspore is called monosporic development. Well, now that we have got a functional megaspore, how about we compare the process of megasporogenesis with microsporogenesis, that is the formation of male spores. But this will only make sense if you have watched a video of microsporogenesis already. So if you have not watched, I would recommend you to go back and watch that video first and then come back to this comparison part. And for those of you who have already watched that video, uh, let's continue. So uh, in microsporogenesis, we saw that there are a number of cells inside the tapetum layer that are capable of giving rise to microspores. Now, in case of female spore formation, we saw all these new cellular cells are capable of giving rise to megaspore, but just one cell becomes the megaspore mother cell. But when it comes to microsporogenesis, all the cells that are capable of formation of microspore, microspore mother cell actually forms microspore mother cell. So here, if we count, we'll see that we have eight cells uh, inside the tapetum and all these eight cells will simultaneously undergo meiosis and will give rise to uh, 8 multiplied by 4. We get 32 microspores. And the interesting part is that all these 32 microspores, they remain functional unlike in megasporogenesis where only one megaspore at the end remains functional. So the number of male spores is always higher than the number of female spore and the reason is a male spore has to travel all the way from the anther to the stigma and sometimes to the stigma of some other flower in some other plant in the nearby plant of the same species. So while doing so, while traveling from, from the anther to other parts, a number of male spores gets destroyed. It may fall on wrong places or it may not uh, develop pollen tube. So a number of things might happen and that is the reason the number of male spores is always higher. And on the other hand, there is no such risk involved when it comes to a megaspore. Because uh, all, all it has to do is to sit in a bucket of micellar cells and wait for the pollen tube to reach it right? Reach the megaspore and fertilize it. And that is the reason just one single healthy fully nourished megaspore is sufficient. And hence we get just one functional megaspore in an ovule. Alright, now that we have learned all about megaspore and how it is produced, how about we try and answer a question related to it. 
So what I would like you to do is to pause the video and try and answer these questions. Okay, I think you have found the answer to all these questions, but let me tell you how I find out the answers. So the first question is, if a megaspore mother cell has 20 chromosomes, that means this cell here, if it has 20 chromosomes, how many functional megaspore will it produce? Well, we have seen one megaspore mother cell by the end of meiosis produces four megaspores out of which just one stays functional. So this one here is the functional megaspore, right? So uh, the first question, how many functional megaspore will it produce? The answer would be one. It produces just one functional megaspore. And the next question is, what will be the number of chromosomes in it? Well, the number of chromosomes in the functional megaspore is half the number of chromosomes that was in the megaspore mother cell. So in the question, it is said that the megaspore mother cell has 20 chromosomes. So half of it, that means the functional megaspore will have 10 chromosomes. So this was all about how a megaspore is formed inside the ovule in an ovary. In our future video, we will talk about how this megaspore further divides and give rise to female gametes.